Now, as we move forward, we have a question from 2018. The question reads as, how is the National Green Tribunal different from the Central Pollution Control Board? National Green Tribunal was created by your National Green Tribunal Act and your Central Pollution Control Board was created by something called as your Water Act. Okay. Now, let's go into the question. First statement reads as, the NJT has been established by an act, whereas the CPCB has been created by an executive order of the government. I just told you, both of them are by your acts. Okay, so that first statement is wrong. The second statement reads as, the NGT provides environmental justice and helps reduce the burden of litigation in the higher courts, whereas the CPCB promotes the cleanliness of streams and wells and aims to improve the quality of air in the country. The second statement is actually the chief objective of both of these things. For example, the NJT in India was created primarily to reduce the burden of your normal courts and to ensure that environmental justice is given in a very quick manner. Because come on, if there is an environmental problem and the court case will go for 10-15 years, by then that specific environment would have been very brutally degraded. So, this is the reason why you need quick justice when it comes to environmental act uh, activities and your second statement is actually detailing that. When it comes to the CPCB, though I said CPCB was created under the Water Act, I want you to understand it deals with pollution both in water, air, land, etc. So, here your statement 2 only is correct. So, the answer to the question is B. Moving forward, we have a question from 2018 which reads as, the definition of critical wildlife habitat is incorporated in the Forest Rights Act of 2006. For the first time in India, bygars have been given habitat rights. Union Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change officially decides and declares habitat rights for primitive and vulnerable tribal groups in any part of India. You tell me, we just discussed something called as your Forest Rights Act. If you if you watch that discussion, you know that any 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 act coming from the side of the people will not be from the environment angle. Environment angle tries to protect the certain areas over there. So here, when you look the third statement, which reads, and this is statement one, two, and three, the sta third statement, which reads as the Union Ministry of Forest and Climate Change does all that, that is clearly wrong. Why? Because you have Ministry of Tribal Affairs doing those activities. Okay, so the third statement is wrong. When the third statement is wrong itself, you do get the answer, which is one and two. Now, you might be confused, what is this critical wildlife habitat? See, so this is one pointer for you. There are two very similarly placed terms called as critical tiger habitat and another one called as critical wildlife habitat. Critical tiger habitat is declared as part of Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Critical wildlife Habitat is declared as part of Forest Rights Act of 2006. Got it? So, these are two very similarly placed terms. Just want you to understand over here that wildlife habitat is being declared by your Forest Rights Act. Okay? So, the answer to this question is A. Moving forward, we have a question from 2017. In India, if a species of tortoise is declared protected under Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, what does it imply? Okay, four statements are there. Before I go into the statements, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background. In India, under the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, currently there are four major schedules. Okay. Previously, it had six. Currently, there are four. Now, schedule one is given to the animals with highest, which need highest protection. Okay. Schedule two is for animals with lesser protection. 
schedule 3 is for plants and schedule 4 is for animals that are declared protected under an international convention called as your sites. So, any Indian animal that is part of your sites appendix, okay, gets listed under your fourth schedule. Okay, now this is your background. Now, let us look into the question. It enjoys the same level of protection as the tiger. It no longer exists in the wild. A few individuals are under captive protection and not, it is not impossible and it is impossible to prevent its extinction. It is endemic to a particular region of India. Both B and C stated above are correct in this context. This, sta this statements have been con just, it is a very basic level question because if you know Environment, Pro I mean, if you know Wildlife Protection Act, you do know for a fact that you have your first one, which is it enjoys the same level of protection as the tiger is the answer to it because why schedule one means it would be giving the highest level of protection. Okay. Moving further on, we have a question from 2017. The question reads as, according to the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, which of the following animals cannot be hunted by any person except under some provisions provided by the law? Okay. I want you to understand one thing when it comes to your Wildlife Protection Act. In all the cases, they just try to give the highest level of protection based on the schedule. Schedule 1 gets the highest level of protection. Schedule 2, if you look at the previous acts also, the rest of the schedules get lesser protection. But nevertheless, all of them are protected. Okay. When I am saying highest level and lesser level, it is not you are choosing which animal will get protected or not. All of them are protected. But just that, maybe the punishments that uh, someone gets for hunting an animal of Schedule 1, and a hunting an animal of schedule 3 will be quite different. In schedule 3, the hunting would be a little bit lesser. This is the idea. So, now when the question is asked, which of the animals cannot, by, cannot be hunted by any person except under some provisions. Now, these provisions primarily mean that at any given point, you can have exceptions. For example, take the Indian wild ass. If at some point, it becomes so harmful to human life, then the can, there is a provision in the law itself to say that, okay, this is being harmful to a man, we have to somehow reduce its population. Understood. So, that applies to any animal. Even when it comes to tigers, if you have man-eating tigers that are constantly killing off humans and everything, you do see measures where it is either tranquilized or even killed. Now, tiger is the one that is given the highest level of protection. But still in that spe special case, what has happened? You have taken special provisions and you have utilized it for human good. So, now coming to this question, they are saying Gharial, Indian wild ass and wild buffalo. Now, be it any of these animals, they can be hunted under any exceptional provisions of the law if they become harmful to the human life. So, your answer to this question over here is D, 1, 2 and so, you do not have to necessarily know the schedule of any of these animals, be it a schedule 1 animal or 2 animal, 3 animal or any animal which is out there and I am speaking with context to the uh, previous act, okay, the, uh, the pre-2022 act. What happens over there is, be it any of these categories, if it becomes harmful to human life, there are provisions to hunt it down. We cannot hunt it down. We will have permissions from the chief wildlife or the chief wildlife warden will ensure that they get hunted down. Got it? So, the answer to this question is D. Moving on, the next question is from 2015. We have and I guess those who have been watching these sessions already know the answer to this. The Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee is constituted under the Food Safety and Standards Act of 2006, Geographical Indications of Goods Registration and Protection Act of 1999. Environment Protection Act of 1986 and Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. This is where I want you to drive your attention. It We have already discussed this. The answer to this question is C. It is the Environment Protection Act of 1986. 
just few more pointers over here this is a very recurring pattern um, upsc has this very uh, soft corner like affection for your environment protection act primarily because environment protection act has given rise to so many different bodies okay like for example i'll just tell you there is a central groundwater authority Central Groundwater Authority was declared under your Environment Protection Act of 1986. Okay. Next, coming on to something that we study called as your Environment Impact Assessment. The roots of this lie in your Environment Protection Act of 1986. Moving further on, any kind of new Ganga protection bodies. that comes under your environment protection act okay in india we have created the ozone depleting substances rules and that also came under your environment protection act of 1986 got it now you know from this question your genetic engineering appraisal committee was also created under your environment protection act of 1986